Now, we believe that the King James Bible is the perfect, pure Word of God. There's no other Bible compared to it. It's King James Bible. All other Bibles are wrong. Now, it's easy to debunk all these modern version Bibles. But then when the modern version Bibles are debunked, the critics, they're going to try to go toward the King James Bible line of manuscripts. So through these line of manuscripts, we call them Byzantine or majority text. Just put it right here. TR, don't matter. We'll just put it all right here. There are some differences, but we're just going to generalize it largely here. So through these lines of manuscripts, what the critics are going to do, the critics of your King James Bible, because they can't see, because the modern Bibles, so we'll put it as MB right here, the modern Bibles came from a line of Alexandrian manuscripts. Now, Alexandrian manuscripts, we know what's wrong with them. I showed you lots of videos on that, so it's easily debunked. So because this is easy to debunk, what they're going to try to do is correct your King James Bible through this line of manuscripts, see? So then what came out before the King James is one of the English Bibles, is Geneva. So uh, recently, a few years ago, there are people who started to rave about Geneva. And they think that's better than your King James Bible. They might not fall for the modern Bible versions or the new King James version, but they're going to go to Geneva and they'll use that to say that's better than your King James Bible. Now, is it true Geneva came from the right line of manuscripts, the Bible? Yes, it did. But you got to realize this, it still had imperfections. That's why the Lord had to produce other English Bibles until we finally hit the perfect one. Now, Kirk Cameron was like advertising that and he made a big deal out of it. And you know, Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort, they are sympathetic toward Bible believers. I have Bible-believing friends who've been in touch with them. And Kirk Cameron, he knows this issue. But I'm not going to get into details on all that, all right? That's between him and God. But he should know better. He heard about this issue. He knows the King James Bible is right. So does Ray Comfort. But because I know this, because of pressure from your Christian organizations, that's why you would cave in. You know, if Cameron was able to sacrifice that much in Hollywood, why can't he just sacrifice a little more for Jesus and become a Bible believer? Is it because, honestly, because Geneva is better? Let's assume that, all right? He seems, he's intellectual. He challenges people to arguments. All right, if that's the case, Kirk Cameron and other people out there, let's really see, okay? But I highly doubt that. That's just an excuse. Here are some of the excuses they would use. Geneva was used by Protestant Reformation scholars. And the early founding of America when the pilgrims came in, that was the Bible that they used. See, they will use that to try to say the King James Bible is not as good as Geneva. They will give that impression. But you know what the simple answer to that is? The simple answer to that is those scholars that he was uh, claiming, many of them were heretical Calvinists. See, Calvinism is a blatant heresy already. So many of them were heretical Calvinists. But not only that, if he wants to use that as an excuse that Geneva was used by Protestant Reformation scholars and the early founding of America, well, guess what? The, uh, if he wants to use a historical time period to make Geneva better, King James Bible is even better than that in its historical time period. You know why? Because the King James Bible was used during the Great Awakening Revivals where hundreds of thousands of souls got saved. The Protestant Reformation, you know what they were doing? It was a dead age. There wasn't any mission work except the Moravians that time that were, that were really doing it for Jesus Christ. Protestant Reformation scholars, they were all sheltered in their own little lands and doing political wars. That's what they were doing. They weren't doing preaching, mission work, and all that kind of stuff compared to the Great Awakening revivals under the King James Bible. By the way, in the early founding of America, yes, they even used the King James Bible too. So it doesn't change the fact. By the way, let's get even better. The 400 years, why did they use King James Bible, not Geneva then? Why did all the Great Awakening Revival preachers, all the preachers, all the Christians for nearly four, for 400 years use King James? Geneva had its, had its role in, in between the 400 years, sometimes here and there, but King James Bible reigned supreme. See, it's longer than Geneva. It's more popular. More Christians used it, see? So that historical argument's not going to work. Here's another one. Geneva was written in freedom without government interference like the KJV. So they will claim the King James Bible was interfered by the government. Geneva, the scholars had a lot of freedom to do it. 
Well, you know, that's just proof that how do they not know? That's a biased translation then. Mm -hmm. See that? Because those Calvinist scholars want to put some kind of what? Their own doctrine in there. And you know what the evidence for that is? The evidence for that is in their Bible, it had a lot of notes. Tons and tons of notes. The King James Bible did not have doctrinal notes in there. It was meant for the text itself. So yeah, government interference, but that's practically good then, because then it will show that the, those translators were not being biased. They were being watched. Okay? They were being watched. But not only that, another thing is you got to look at the proof of the text itself for bias. You can't just make, you just can't randomly look at history and then automatically conjure up an assumption because of that historical event, that's why they translated it this way. They must have done that. And that's the reason why they were biased. See, that's, not, that's an assumption right there. That's assumption work. In order to find if the text is right or wrong is to look at the manuscript evidence text itself. Simple as that. It's that simple. And guess what? The King James Bible, there is no provable error. They have tried it, but guess what? There is no provable error. There is always a manuscript evidence out there. There is some kind of English Bible out there. There is some kind of commentary or uh, some kind of European translation or translation from the right line of the majority Byzantine manuscript. There is always something out there that supports it, or a church father, or even a papyri. See? So there is no provable error in the King James to do that. Another thing is this. What they would like to say is that King James didn't like the Geneva Bible due to its notes conflicting the King James' own political beliefs. So he wanted the King James Version to correct the Geneva. See, it's like a con see that's why this is like inferior, you see, compared to Geneva. They're trying to give that impression. But the simple answer is like what I gave earlier. That's good, he didn't like the notes, see? Because all of that is the scholars, what they want to write doctrinally, which is why they translated it that way. See, a lot of bias in there. Again, the evidence is what? Text itself. Text itself. Don't conjure up an assumption by looking at history. Because anybody can do that, like they do with Greek and Hebrew. You can put, pull up anything, any incident in history, and conjure up your assumption and interpretation out of it. See? That doesn't make it true. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. So those are faulty arguments. But remember, let's make it simple. The evidence is text itself, right? Text itself. So let's look at the text itself. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 8. This is why the King James Bible is even better. What does the King James Bible say? God will provide himself a lamb, right? Is that what the verse says? You know why the verse says that? Because God himself is the lamb that he provided. Himself, Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus says at the book of John, Abraham saw my day and was glad to see it. What other verse was it if it wasn't this one? That verse was prophetic. But you know what the Geneva Bible says? God will provide him a lamb for the offering. See that? That's not God himself being the lamb for us. It's God providing some random lamb out there. Okay, problem one. Here's a second problem right here with Geneva. We're going to look at 2 Samuel 21. Now, some of you can guess this. This is infamously used against the modern versions. And guess what? Geneva made that silly mistake. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 19. Okay, simple question. Who killed Goliath? David, David right? Was it Elhanan? No. You, some of you guys never even heard that name until now. Elhanan killed Goliath? What, Pastor? Look at 2 Samuel chapter 21. And we're going to look at verse 19. Elhanan didn't kill Goliath. He killed the brother of Goliath. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 21. And we will read verse 19. The King James Bible says, And there was again a battle in God with the Philistines, where, where Elhanan the son of Jeri Oregim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath. But no, the Geneva says Elhanan slew Goliath, not the brother of Goliath. There's a contradiction. By the way, you look, compare that with 1 Chronicles 20, verses 4 through 5. Geneva says Elhanan killed the brother of Goliath. But then in 2 Samuel 21, Geneva says Elhanan killed Goliath. Well, what in the world then? See, there's a contradiction in its own text, not just common sense Sunday school story. But look at Psalms chapter 8, verse 4 through 5. Psalms chapter 8, verse 4 through 5. 
This is like heresy right here. Look at Psalms 8, verses 4 through 5. This is heresy right here. Now, Gnostics, they like to worship angels, right? Not only that, Satan, he wants the fallen beings, those fallen angels, to be gods, right? Like God. It's Psalms chapter 8, verses 4 through 5. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? For thou hast made him a little lower than who? The angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Guess what the Geneva Bible says? For thou hast made him a little lower than God, not angels. Oh, that's a, what? Kirk Cameron, did you really read this? See, I think more, if you're being honest, I'm not being mean, but I'm kind of pleading with you, if you are listening by any chance, Kirk Cameron, that I think you just go, you caved under pressure, that's why. Because you know how solitary, isolated, and controversial it is to be King James Bible only. That's why. Let's also look at Psalms 138. Psalms chapter 138, verse 2. Psalms chapter 138, verse 2. A very important verse that we always use. Psalms chapter 138, verse 2. The God raised up his word, his word above his own name. That's right. So when you mess up his name, you are stoned to death, right? But you mess up his word, what does he do with you? At Revelation 22, he'll add plagues. He'll even take away your salvation at Revelation 22. Now, thank God that you're, if you're a saved Christian under the blood of Jesus Christ, you're not under that dispensation. Amen. Amen. But look at Psalms chapter 138, verse 2, the last part, the last part. For thou hast magnified thy what? Word above all thy name. Amen, right? That's how God takes his word seriously. You know what Geneva says? For thou hast magnified, magnified thy name above all things by thy word. What in the world? That's a totally different idea. Giving you a totally different doctrine right there. Takes away the value, significance of God's word. Look at John 1, verse 3. John chapter 1, verse 3. This is even worse now. Look at John chapter 1, verse 3. You think we hit the worst? We didn't hit the worst yet. Look at John chapter... Yeah, uh-oh. Okay, you don't need to be smart to see this, all right? The only people who are so smart that they are so dumb to see this is Dan Wallace, James White, John Anklebaum, and sadly, Kirk Cameron. And maybe Ray Comfort, too, because he's close buddies with Kirk Cameron. Let's look at John chapter 1 and verse 3. John chapter 1, verse 3. I call, I call them out. I call them out. I told you, if, even if I lose people, they accuse me of, ha of having no love and all that. No, I'm pointing them out because how many people have those guys influenced? So they have to be called out so that when you listen to them, you don't get fooled by them. Look at John chapter 1 and verse 3. All things were made by who? Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. It's talking about Jesus Christ, right? In verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. Thank Jesus Christ is a Him who made all things. You know what Geneva says? All things were made by it. And without it was not anything made that was made. My Jesus ain't an it or a neuter it. You know... The, whole, the Jehovah Witnesses, yeah. they call the Holy Spirit a neuter it. Yeah. But the Geneva makes it worse by calling Jesus a neuter it. Yeah. You don't think that's a problem? Now look at Malachi 2. Malachi 2. All right, I'll, here are the two worst ones, all right? Look at Malachi chapter 2. You women are going to love this one. Look at Malachi chapter 2, verse 15. You women are going to love this one. If you're a Geneva onlyist, then bless God, your wife is probably not going to like you after this. Look at Malachi chapter 2, verses 15 through 16. And did not he make one, yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. Right? The King James Bible says, don't deal your wife treacherously. Why? Verse 16, for the Lord God, uh, for the Lord, the God of Israel saith that he hateth putting away. See that? He doesn't like it when you mistreat the women and then you just randomly put them away like that. For he hateth putteth away, right? The Geneva said, if thou hatest her, put her away, saith the Lord. Oh, 
<laughs> now that's a laugh right there, right? That's a laugh right there. Total opposite from Malachi 2. Malachi 2 says God hates the putting away, whereas this one says, if you hate her, put her away, saith the Lord. Now look at Hebrews chapter, the Muslim, there you go. Now you got a Muslim Geneva Bible. Look at Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. Here's the worst, the worst one now. You ready? Here's the worst one. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 12. Y'all ready? Here we go. And if Mr. Cameron and some of the believers will not change to King James Bible and stubbornly stick to Geneva after this, there is no doubt you just want to do this no matter what. You don't care about the truth. This should be enough to shock you. Now look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, praise God, right? Amen. Great verse against Catholicism, Mass, right? Because Jesus Christ gave one sacrifice for sins forever, one time. You don't have to have a repeating sacrifice Amen. through the Mass. It's one time forever. And then, comma, sat down on the right hand of God. You wouldn't believe it. Some of you are guessing. Geneva was dumb to do this. Having offered one sacrifice for sins, comma, sitteth forever at the right hand of God. Catholicism. And I thought these were Protestant Reformation scholars who were against Catholicism? This is weird. See? Now, if you're going to still stick to Geneva after this, I don't know what else I can say to help you. All right. Now, do I thank God for Geneva? Absolutely. Because you've got to realize this. Uh, they didn't have computers like us that back then. They didn't have freedom to write this back then. So you got so it's understandable that when they're going through a translation process, it's going to take years and years, many books, many manuscripts. All right, Geneva is one of those better ones compared to the modern version Bibles, actually, and other Bibles. But then Geneva is still had problems. See, we still and then Geneva and then other English Bibles till we hit the King James. And that's your crowning achievement. There's no doubt King James is superior to Geneva. Amen. 